Good afternoon, Stuart Williamson here. At the helm, APW market wrap number 80. Why do we do it? To give you information that you might find useful in managing your buy-to-let portfolio or thinking about buying property investments or just in generally knowing a bit about property. The benefit to you is just that, bite size, less than 10 minutes. Benefit to us, if you share it around enough, we'll get more clients, which is obviously what we're trying to do. Number 80. 80 weeks of doing this consistently, that's a long time. So this week I'm gonna have a bit of a quiz situation. Tell me what was the first year that um, house numbers were introduced into the UK and where? So this week Bank of England hit borrowers with the first interest rate rise for three years. And its fears of inflation soaring to a 30 year high outweighing the rapid spread of the Omicron variant. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Do subscribe if you can, do like, do add uh, the little bell thing to remind you when it comes up. It helps us basically develop our brand and it helps you by getting more and more of this information out there. The decision came as the bank warned that inflation could have hit 6% next year, three times as high as its 2% target it has set for itself and the highest level since 1992 against the current backdrop of headline inflation that is 6.8% in the US, 6% in Germany, and currently 5.1% in the UK. On the back of this, uh, sterling gained against the dollar. It was up by 1.6 cents. And also, the stock market bounced. It will, however, put the squeeze on homeowners because interest rates add the cost to your loan, obviously, if it goes up. The Monetary Policy Committee chose to act despite fears that restrictions to limit the rapid spread of Omicron variant could hurl Britain into another recession. Hurl, do you like that? A record 88,000 daily COVID cases were recorded yesterday in the UK. Andrew Bailey, Governor of the Bank of England, said policymakers are worried that more persistent inflation than previously expected had helped push uh, the economy into overheating. Labour shortages were pushing wages higher, he told the BBC, and the actual quote was, we're concerned about inflation in the medium term, and we're seeing now that things can threaten that. They're also concerned about the tight jobs market. There's a record 1.2 million vacancies in the UK. Can you believe that? And he even suggested that Omicron might add to inflation if the new variant stretches global supply chains further. He said, a potential worsening of global supply chain disruption could push up inflationary pressures, while China's zero COVID policy could trigger renewed disruption at factories and ports. Now the thing is, China has a zero um, COVID policy, and so they've isolated themselves, which in the short term was very beneficial, just like in Australia or New Zealand, for example. But now we're seeing Australia and New Zealand having all sorts of trouble there's no way that Omicron will not get into those places. I believe it is there already. And the same with China. And the China uh, injection that they've um, championed apparently has no resistance to Omicron. So, something to think on. Santander became the first bank to announce it would pass on the full increase to standard variable rate uh, clients or those with tracker mortgages moments after the Bank of England. Straight away, NatWest and Nationwide did the same. Financial markets and economists are now predicting with three more rate rises in 2022, the first to come potentially into the new year, and then after that, before next, probably before next August, with rates potentially rising 1%. Now, why are they increasing interest rates? I mean, basically, to be very basic, interest rates set the price of borrowing money and determine what banks pay you to save money with them. Central banks tend to increase rates when inflation rises above their target. As I said, their target is 2% and it's currently 5.1. So increase, increase um, interest rates, it starts taking money out of the market. So instead of people going and spending money on houses or stocks or shares or this sort of thing, they actually will, will take it out of there and they'll put it into the bank. That's the concept. If, if lending is more expensive, you won't lend as much. And so the economy will start to cool. That's the concept. So the interest rates are going by 1%. What does that mean to you? 
it means that it goes up by 1% and the average cost of a loan in the UK becomes 2.3% or offshore becomes 3.3%. It's going to add nearly £100 a month paying off a £200,000 loan. Now, bear in mind that interest rates are still super low historically. If you look at the averages, okay, with the exception of a spike in the 1980s, interest rates are getting lower and lower every decade. And okay, COVID is something that's brand new. We have no experience of it. So this is a bit of a, you know, we call it a black swan event or a white swan event, one of two. The average rate in 1971 for that decade was 7.54%. 7 As of 2020, the average rate for the previous 10 years was 3.11%. That's a drop of 5%, which is good news for homeowners. So it would indicate potentially Ceteris paribus, all that sort of stuff, that interest rates won't go up that super high again. That's generally the, the thought. So what else can we talk about? It may be worth considering, if you are on a variable rate, to approach your lender, approach your bank, and ask what fixed rates they've got out there. And say, perhaps to fix for two years would be a good idea, because you, know, you can calculate what's going on. And it'll give you some security of knowing that if it does go through the roof, you're not going to be exposed. However, bear in mind that if you are buying on a fixed rate, breaking that rate and paying your mortgage off may be very expensive. So, so you know, think twice before going on to a, a full fix, perhaps split it into two, 50% fixed, 50% floating. And we can help with that sort of stuff at APW. So interest rates have gone up. Okay, and and what does it mean? Does it mean that the Bank of England is saying it doesn't really care if house prices crash and is a some disaster because everyone start, has to sell their homes? Well, obviously they they have a look at this and they say, well, okay, what are the real risk factors? And I thought this myself. I thought, what are the risk factors? Let's do some further investigation into this. Will it will it cause a housing crash? Is Omicron therefore not important? And so. I looked at looked at how dangerous is Omicron, if that's how you pronounce it. The Daily Telegraph reports that, that the clinical evidence from Discovery Health Center in South Africa, three weeks into the Omicron exposure, is that double vaccination leads to 70% protection against hospitalization, and only 5% of those admitted need intensive care, compared to 22% who got Delta. It then states the frontline antibodies may be falling off but rear guard B and T cell memory is working like a charm. The Daily Telegraph also states they believe that Omicron numbers are being cherry-picked in the UK to create alarm, and that the UK is talking itself into an unnecessary winter crisis that will potentially push thousands of small businesses into bankruptcy. They go on to say further, although 96% of the population has already, had, already has COVID antibodies and therefore T cell memory, more than 24 million have had a booster jab, essentially covering the entire cohort of all the vulnerable people in the UK. They wrap up by saying, one is tempted to ask, if it were not for mass testing, would the nation as a whole be even aware of the new Omicron wave? But of course you can't say that. That's utter heresy in the world of COVID. So that's their view. So the Bank of England raising interest rates is not going to tip us into a huge recession. It's going to basically control inflation. Omicron is not going to cause a recession because it's not that serious. Now, please forgive me, I'm not suggesting if anyone gets it, it's not a terrible thing. I'm just saying it's not as serious as Delta or the whole thing to start off with. So it would appear that it's a sound plan to control inflation by increasing interest rates and keep the economy on track. There is no need to panic. And so what's the message that we would try and put across? Look at switching to a fixed rate or a mixed rate if you possibly can. But let's not throw a baby out with the bathwater. The top interest rates, according to what the market is pricing, are likely to be 3% based on the current interest rate cycles and also what they're pricing to the market. So rates are still going to be affordable at that rate. And the way that rents are increasing, I mean, rents, I think previously I said, went up in Nottingham by 9% this last year. 
It went up in parts of Manchester by 8%. Across the country, they're going up by over 3% because there's a shortage of property available to buy and to rent. So you've, you've got those things going on. So the market is still a good investment location. Rentals will cover mortgages. It's a good buying opportunity. That's what we still recommend. And I think the other point is, if inflation is 6% next year, what if you had 10 years of that? Obviously, it's not going to happen. But it'd be 60% inflation, which means your loan on your house would be eroded by 60%. Inflation and your tenant are your best friends. Not crazy inflation like that, obviously. That's it for this week. Don't forget, please do subscribe. One of our uh, watchers wrote in last week and said we get so few subscribers that we're likely to be finishing somewhere between the hare, no, somewhere between the tortoise and the snail, which is not great. Okay, so please do subscribe. And the answer to the question is 1708. First recorded house numbers in Hatton's new view of London. It was in um, Goodman Fields, Oldgate. Thanks very much. Cheerio. Bye-bye.